Hey, Kevin. You're reviewing the troops? Yeah. Yeah, past an inspection here. Yeah. You guys won't believe how many times I get asked, which welder should I get first? The first question I think I'd have to ask is, where are you going to work? Are you in your garage? Are you outside in the backyard? Are you in a shed? Are you... Because that would kind of point you in different directions. What metal are you going to be welding? Are you just going to be doing steel? Are you going to be doing, you know, copper or brass or bronze or aluminum? Or what are you going to plug into? You know, you're going to go out in your garage, let's say. But you only have 110, no 220. Well, they make all kinds of different size, amperage-wise or voltage-wise, machines for that run on 110. Only, next step up, they have dual voltage machines that are 110 or 220. So you can upgrade later. You know, you get 220 run in, you can get a little more power out of the machine, you can do a little more work with it. This is just a little MIG welder. It does flux core, which is no gas. That's what it's set up for now. It also has a spool gun. So if you had the gas, you could do aluminum with it. So you can do steel and aluminum on 110. Who makes it? Well, this is a longevity MIG weld 140. Great little machine to start with. You're not going to be making a battleship with it. You know, you're not going to be doing, you know, uh, competition race cars or anything like that. You know, it doesn't have enough horsepower. It doesn't have enough amperage to it to be doing anything over about three-eighths of an inch. So, nice starter machine. If you have 220 in your garage, you can move up to a bigger MIG welder. Longevity's MIG weld 250P. That means it has pulse. Are you going to be working outside? You'd probably want either flux core or you'd want stick or arc. The little Lincoln tombstones, they, they used to call them. You know, little buzz boxes. This is the one I started on. Okay, I had one just like this, only it was a AC-DC machine, where this one is just straight AC. And this runs on 220. Sucks up power unbelievably. Much worse than the 110 or the 220 inverters. That's a transformer. MIG welders, both of the MIG welders, they run gas, big spools, fairly. Great for long welds, production welds, um, great one handed welding. You can hold your piece in place, pick up your MIG gun, zap and tack it in place. When you're putting some big sculpture together, you know, you're working under the car, working on the exhaust system or something, you got to hold this and, and get it in place. Then you can come back and weld it. But they're smoky and they splatter a little. There's a little to clean up. Just like the arc welder. A little to clean up. A little bit of grinding to do when you're done. The TIG welder, no smoke, no splatter, no sparks. Harder to learn how to weld, you know, for, for a beginner, this is a little harder to pick up. But once you learn how, much more versatile than either the MIG or the ARC. You want to weld steel, no problem. Aluminum, pick up a different filler rod, switch it from AC to DC, and go weld aluminum. Copper, brass, bronze nickel, titanium, magnesium, any of it. This is the machine. It'll do it all. Jewelry. Get the little 110 volt version of a TIG welder. Longevity makes one. It's a 160SX. Nice little machine. Great for doing little delicate work. So Kevin, why don't you show them the welder I started with? Oxygen acetylene. Oxygen acetylene just an open flame, just uh, some filler rod, you know, either the kind that like they use with the TIG welder. Heck, I use coat hanger. It works just as fine, you know, just as good for me. Once you learn how to oxygen acetylene weld, you're three quarters of the way to knowing how to TIG weld. They're that similar. This one just runs on electricity. This one runs on gas. 
a lot of heat, a lot of smoke. Thinner metals, you get a lot of distortion because of the heat, because it's over a wider area, where the TIG welder, not so much. Much, much tinier welding area that you're actually working with as opposed to that. And you need no power. No power. None whatsoever. You don't have to get big bottles. You can get little tiny bottles. You can get a little handheld carrying case for the bottles, the torch, everything, and you just pick it up, carry it around like a little suitcase. And you can bend. And you can bend with it. You can cut with it. You can shape with it. You know, you heat it and bend it and, and hammer it, you know, uh, however you want to do it. Very versatile. But, like I say, smoky and hot. And you can't do it inside. You, you, know, you really should do this outside or with you know, plenty of ventilation because of the fumes. Can you talk to us about price a little bit? To go down to the, the like, you know, Prax Air or US Air, US Gas, you know, to get a set of bottles, to get the torches, get the, 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 the hoses, you know, get all set up for oxygen acetylene. Uh, let's, let's say you know, like a mid-sized bottle. It's going to run you to start probably in the three to five hundred dollar range. And then to fill those bottles is going to run you probably another guessing here at about fifty to a hundred dollars to fill both of the bottles. The little longevity MIG well. This one's only the three hundred and thirty bucks. Plus you need a cat you need the bottle if you're going to run solid core or you need the, the flux core, no gas. You can just, you know, 330 another, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks for a spool of wire. You know, it comes with a little face shield, and you're all set up. You plug it in, you can go. So the little Lincoln uh, AC225 arc welder, or at Amazon, these suckers are over 600 bucks. You can get them cheaper. You can get little 110 volt arc welders for less than a hundred bucks over on Amazon. I don't know anything about them though. I've never even seen one, so I, you know, I can't say either way. The 250 uh, MIG weld, the 250 amp MIG weld, this one was, this one was about $1,600. Uh, a nice size, you know, great little machine. The, and the TIG weld 250, this one was uh, just under about $1,900, I think it was. You know, plus you need the bottle, you gotta get the helmet, you gotta get you know, the stuff to go along with it. The other thing you gotta keep in mind is what kind of person are you? Are you mechanically minded? You know, can you learn just by watching it one time and go pick it up and do it and play with it and, and learn and teach yourself? Because that kind of points you in the right direction. You know, are, are you, do you want, do you need a machine that's really easy to use? Then all you have to do is just you know push a button and pick it up and pull the trigger and you can weld. Or do you want something that takes a little more skill, takes a little more practice, takes a little more learning, much better weld, much quicker weld. I hope that helps point you in the right direction. If not, leave me a comment right down here and I'll try to answer it and maybe we can help one another out. See you next time.